Second chapter, the 37th verse. Daniel was speaking to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he says, Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. He says, and whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of the parvish clay, pot of iron, part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, for there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, forasmuch as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And he says, and as the toes of the feet were, were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. How many appreciates the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> Which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. 45th verse, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, everybody say certain, and the interpretation thereof, sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. The Lord will help us with this title in mind, A Dropped Stone. A Dropped Stone. Let's bow our heads, could we? Heavenly Father God, we love you. We appreciate you. I want you to start calling out to him and talk to the Lord for a second. Lord, we love you and we appreciate you. We honor you. We respect you. God, we need your help. Lord, we don't need anybody's help but yours this morning. We need you to lead us and guide us and direct us. Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. We know you, the God that speaks to your people. and You lead your people. You guide your people. Hide me behind the cross. Let it be as you speaking. For only you have the words of eternal life. And we're going to all be very careful to give you the glory and the praise. The church said amen. Would you give the Lord a, a boisterous hand clap? You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. And this portion of text, uh, Daniel is, he, he's, he's quite a, a man of God. I mean, and, and, and that's, that's speaking very lightly, but he's a, he's a prophet of God. And uh, in this in this day and age, if you could really roll back and, and see it, it's quite amazing. Nebuchadnezzar, he approaches Daniel and he says, Hey, can you tell me what I dreamed last night? Can you tell me the interpretation? In those days, uh, not only did they interpret the dream, in those days they told them what was the dream that they had. Now that's getting pretty thick with it, isn't it? It's one thing to give somebody's interpretation of what a person has, but to actually tell them the dream. And so the magicians couldn't do it. The astrologers of that age, they couldn't do it. Nebuchadnezzar had access to the smartest and the most brilliant and the most talented men. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of the Babylonian Empire. and He was the, as Daniel said, he was that head of gold that he had seen represented in his vision. And so Daniel said he was laying in bed. That's what he told Nebuchadnezzar. We didn't read this, but he said, I was laying in bed, and, and he says, and it came to my mind what you had saw. So he's standing in front of the, 
the, the king of the superpower of Babylon and he's reading him off like just reading his mail. And he begins to talk about several things that we see just completely unveiled in history. And I'm not going to get all into the weeds because some of you, you, you know, some of us, most of us, uh, we really don't even think on these terms, but i got to get to a main point. And so he, what Daniel begins to see is he begins to see several superpowers raise up. And also he sees those same superpowers fall. What I mean by a superpower, for instance, Babel, Babylon in that day and age covered basically what we considered the whole known world. And it wasn't long till the Medes came in. And it was also a superpower. And it covered, it took over the ground that the Babylon had. And then Persia came. And Daniel also saw in the vision of Nebuchadnezzar, he also saw Rome, the Roman Empire. And all of these great superpowers was representative, uh, it was represented rather in iron and in clay and in gold and in silver. When he saw iron and he saw clay and he saw gold and he saw silver, what Nebuchadnezzar was seeing was simply these certain contents, iron, clay, gold, silver, but what Daniel was seeing was worlds. He was seeing, as I said, superpowers, nations. And what Daniel was further seeing, that Nebuchadnezzar was seeing in a type or a shadow, Daniel was seeing all of these things come to naught. He was seeing all of these kingdoms just crumble. Ain't that something? Now, could you imagine looking at the king of this superpower? They drink out of gold glasses, or gold cups, gold bowls, gold spoons. And you're going to tell him, the Lord has spoken. It's clear. It's sure. You're coming to naught. Well, that's powerful, isn't it? And so, but then Dave, Daniel goes a little further. He says, now, we we seen a stone that was hewed out of the mountain not with hand everybody with me we, we see a stone that was taken from a, a rock that was not hewed out by hands you see the Babylonian the Babylonian empire was, was built by men and women, kings and queens alright your Persian and Medes and Persians they also it was built by hands. It was built by man's ideologies and theologies and religions. All of these, Rome, for instance, the iron legs, it's what was representative of Rome. They had the greatest, uh, the greatest soldiers the world had ever seen. This statue of iron legs represented the Roman Empire. And it too was built from a democracy. It was built by people and ideologies and philosophies, and et cetera. It was built by hand, men's hand. But Daniel saw something completely unique and beautiful and wonderful. And what he saw was a stone that was chipped out of a big stone, if you will. And it was, it was not made with hands. Dave, what Daniel saw was a supernatural kingdom. How many believes we're in a supernatural kingdom? Praise God for two hand claps. Y'all on fire today. He says, for as much as thou sawest the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Watch this. And the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, it crushed. Everybody say crushed. It broke into pieces. The iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. And he says, and the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. Now, what has happened, ladies and gentlemen, and I want you to consider this. We have, we have put a lot of our trust in kingdoms that is made with hands. How many knows that's right? If you were in that day, ladies and gentlemen, you felt secure. 
to be in, in, in Babylon. You felt secure if you were a Mede. You felt secure if you were a Persian. You felt secure if you were a Roman. But ladies and gentlemen, those were all kingdoms made with, with men and men's hands and ideologies. And also, when those kingdoms was in effect, they were the only kingdoms standing of great, great resource and value. But what the Lord was doing is even in Daniel's day, 200 B.C. possibly, what God was speaking to Daniel was there's something coming. There's a kingdom coming that everyone's going to look right over. It's, it's going to be right in people's presence and they're not even going to see it. And the reason why people are not going to see it is because it's not going to be created or made by man's hands. It's not going to be formulated from ideas or, or structured from, from somebody's great vision or intellect. But this is going to be a supernatural awakening. And when the people become awakened, it will build, listen, it will build a kingdom that will destroy any other kingdom that gets in its way. How many is with me today, ladies and gentlemen? If you were to take and turn to 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 7. Let's go to 6 first. He says, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. This is Peter speaking. Peter's drawing all the way back from Isaiah, all the way back into Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar's vision. I want you to remember something. Nebuchadnezzar is the one that saw this vision. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt respected Daniel. But, but as far as his religion goes, that's a pagan country with a pagan king. And he saw this vision. Peter is bringing up this vision. He's bringing up this interpretation. He's bringing up what Isaiah prophesied about. He says, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he says, and he that believeth on him shall never be confounded. How many knows we, we don't have to be confounded this morning? Now he says, look, if you, you don't want to be confounded, you don't want to be put to shame. Are you hearing me today? If you don't want to be put to shame, he says, then you, then you need to really believe in this stone that the, guess what? The builders rejected. <laughs> you, you need to... You don't need to be ashamed and you need to be a believer Amen. in the rock that you did not see created. Oh. You, need to, you need to become a believer in the rock, ladies and gentlemen, that you didn't see hewed out. You need to be a, a believer in something besides what your hands can create or what your predecessor created. You, if you want to be a, not ever be put to shame and not ever be crumbled or crushed, you better start believing in the stone. How many is with me? He says, now, the scripture contains something. If you don't want to be put to shame, think about Peter. Think about the day and age in which he's in. Rome looks undefeated. Rome looks vibrant. Rome, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like nothing. It's got the, the greatest roads in history. Some roads that the Roman soldiers built back 2,000 years ago still used today. They had the greatest soldiers and the greatest army because they had the greatest roads. They, they, were, they were passionate about it. It was the very first state, if you will, that had paid soldiers. They, 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 they was on call 24 hours a day. It looked like someone had finally created a world, created a government, created an entity that, that nothing could destroy, nothing could confound, nothing could eliminate. But ladies and gentlemen, they was not taking into account that there was a stone created. Oh, my, 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 my. I don't know about you, but I like it. If you don't, I'm sorry. You got to endure it for a few more minutes. They, they, they wasn't taking into account what, what God was doing. You see, oftentimes when we don't see God moving, we just think he's not moving. 
when we don't see things shaking, we just think nothing's happening. We, when we don't see tides rolling back and we don't see clouds moving and we're still having trouble, oftentimes we absolutely forget or, or don't consider that God is still working. There's prophecies still being fulfilled that is thousands of years old. We're right in the middle of this stream, ladies and gentlemen. We need to just hold on a little bit longer. And he says, unto you therefore which believe he is precious. How many believes he's precious? I want you to consider something this morning. You notice he gave this name, uh, this stone, an, an identity. How many is with me? A stone isn't a he or a she or a him. A stone is a thing. Are you with me? A piece of material. But no, 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 ladies and gentlemen, he says, now to you that believe he's precious. How do you think about some of these, what do you consider, like some of these movies, you know, that they make? You notice the wording, like that Lord of the Rings, he's precious, it's precious, it's precious. Well, they, you know, you say, oh, that, but you see, they're pulling that from somewhere. That ring, the ring isn't precious. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen, they but one thing, precious. How many is with me today, you backslid Baptist? How many is with you? They ain't but one thing precious. You see, they can try to pervert what's precious all they want. But there ain't but one thing precious. There ain't but one thing that'll keep you from being confounded. And that is the stone that the world is rejecting. <laughs> unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. That same stone Daniel saw in the vision, hewed out not by hands. But ladies and gentlemen, when this stone, was the, you know, it, it looked like it was, it was born in such a way, it was created in such a way, it would just come to naught. Gamaliel said, look, he said, if this be God, you can't fight against it. But if it's not God, it'll come to naught. I believe it's safe to say this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that this stone, it wasn't for naught, but rather God was behind it because no world could end it. No corrupt religion could destroy it or taint his power. God's kingdom is still strong. Aren't you glad of that? We have some, we have some things threatening this kingdom. It's not at all what some of us think, I don't believe. Maybe we'll have time to get to that. But Matthew 21, Jesus pulls 21 and 42. And he says, Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head of the corner? Notice what he says. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous. How many believes it's marvelous? Therefore, Say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Are you hearing me? That's going to be taken from you, and it's going to be given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. How I many has got fruits? And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be breaking or broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind them to powder. Now, if you fall on the stone, it's going to break you. Right? But if the stone falls on you, it's going to grind you to powder. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, there ain't no shame in falling on the stone. Because a broken, are you with me today? Because some of us ain't never producing nothing unless we get broken. But the shame is when that stone has to grind us. And it's got to ground us. Jesus was saying, look, you better fall on the stone. And you better let it break you. That clear, beautiful springs of life shall come forward. My God, how many loves him today? Ah, see, some of us, we're not been, we've not been grounded. Us, we've just been broken. And, and because we're not embracing that and because we're not learning from it, it seems like our brokenness just continues and continues and continues. But, but that's not the case. God is breaking us because I'm here to tell you, you never get a reward without a trial. Amen. Jesus was the only king crowned before he ever had a trial. You and I, we got to come another way. The trials come and then the kingship comes. we got to get broke before we wear the crown. Oh, 
How many loves him? Think about it. Jesus said, whoever falls on this stone, they're going to be ground to powder. Not just broken. There'll be nothing left. Peter speaking. He says, he's precious. He says, the builders, notice this. The builders rejected this stone. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something. He said the builders, not the people peeking through watching the builders, not the anti-God, no, the builders that built this house rejected this stone. I'm going to get into this now. And, and so he's made this stone the head of the corner. The head of the corner. He says, look, basically the chief cornerstone. The cornerstone is what brings the entire foundation into harmony. we got builders in here that know what I'm talking about. It's the cornerstone is what everything is squared from. Everything is held together from. For instance, ladies and gentlemen, let's consider astrology. If you took Plato out of astrology, you still have astrology. Or Aristotle, you take Jesus out of Christianity and you have nothing. How many is with me today? Because he is the chief cornerstone. See, we didn't lose a prophet. How many is with me? We didn't lose a preacher. We didn't lose a pastor. We didn't lose a good shepherd. We didn't lose somebody wise. We never lost him at all. He's always been God. He'll always be God. He never left us. He's never forsaken us. He'll be with us until the end. He lives inside of us, and we're still building this building. Give him some praise. My, my, my. Think about it. The builders rejected this stone. Think about it. Ah, I want you to consider something. There was a bunch of builders that brought Jesus a woman caught in the very act of adultery. Builders, pastors, preachers, evangelists, prophets, priests, Pharisees brought Jesus a woman caught in the very act of adultery. And the word says, Jesus, you must stone her. Are you with me? And so they all have their stones. They're anticipating Jesus to say, well, that is what the law says. I don't believe there was as much anticipating as they already knew he wasn't going to. They just didn't know how he was going to get around it. So they got the stones fully expecting Jesus to grab a stone or maybe hoping he would. Because see, the, the, the builders, they want you to come to their side. This is proof that you're with us. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. I mean to tell you, sometimes the builders can get off course. Sometimes the builders can get away from the word. Are you with me? Sometimes the builders can leave the truth. Sometimes the builders can mess up. Sometimes, but I'm going to tell you what never changes. His word never changes. How many is with me? The stone never changes. My God. Think about it. Jesus, the Bible says he reached down, starts dribbling in the sand, writing something. Ladies and gentlemen, they're holding stones. He's dropping his. I mean, he's with me. What do you mean he dropped his? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that the law was given to Moses. How was it given to Moses? By God. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. How many is with me today? Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, was there, if you will, when the law was written. He was there when the commandments was given to Moses. He was there. He knew all about it. He knew it better than they knew it. But he wasn't coming that day to stone. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. He was coming that day to drop the stone. But let me show you something about grace that the Lord dropped into my spirit this week. He said sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Sometimes grace is offensive. Now watch, watch. Help me, God. Now think about this. Jesus is showing 
an unmeasurable act of grace. And it's offensive to the builders. I mean, it's offensive to the builders. It's an, how can grace be an offense? How in the world can mercy be an offense? They're mad that he don't stone her. But the Bible says they're convicted in their heart by whatever he scribbles or writes or, or does in the process. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something about grace. Grace in proven in what Jesus did. It's, it's not, it's not a, never meant to be a license to sin or to get a pass after Ezra transgression. Grace has been the vehicle for mercy until we come to maturity because he tells the lady, go and sin no more. When the stone was struck, that lady changed her life. Come on, somebody. Most theologians say this very lady is the one that broke the alabaster box on his feet. And again, grace and mercy, ladies and gentlemen, was ridiculed that day. It was fault. Why are you messing with her? Why are you messing with this low lie? Why are you hanging out with her? But the Bible says, Jesus said, I'm here to tell you, you ain't that desire to wash my feet. You ain't desire to clothe me. You ain't desire to be with me. I'm here to tell you, when the stone drops, it breaks hard hearts. It breaks spirits. It breaks addiction. It breaks everything that is hindering someone from glorifying God. Come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Think about it. Think about it. It's offensive. The builders rejected the stone. The builders I hit you now. The builders are rejecting the stone this morning. You said, oh, they believe in Jesus. They do. They believe in, in their ideology of Jesus. But again, ladies and gentlemen, they've, they've went slammed the other direction with grace. Slammed wound the other lane with mercy. And instead of Jesus showing mercy, but then, but then, politely, respectfully, saying, sin no more. No, 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 no. What the builders are rejecting is grace without maturity. So what the builders are rejecting today is a partial Jesus. How many is with you today? He's a Jesus of love and compassion and mercy. He's a Jesus of fruits of the Spirit, but, but he's, he's not a Jesus of judgment. He's not a Jesus of growth. He's, he's, he's not a Jesus of, of condemning you or to telling you, look, you, you, you must change your ways. Some of us fall in this category this morning where we feel like we can just continue and continue and continue, but listen to what Paul said. Now, Paul should know because he was showed grace like no other was showed grace. He says, what shall we say then? Sixth chapter of Romans, the first verse, shall we continue? Everybody say continue in sin that grace may abound. Are you hearing me today? He says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know what Paul's preaching? Paul's preaching that there's a dispensation where grace is no longer needed in the heart of a believer. Some of you just said, there ain't no way, it ain't, it ain't possible. We just read it in the Bible. And the reason why we think that way is because, ladies and gentlemen, we're stumbling over the rock. What do you mean by that, ladies and gentlemen? When we allow the stone to take a preeminence in our life just as if we obey the kingdoms of this earth we obey the laws and the magistrates of this earth we fall under control of this law of this magistrate of this order of the United States of America we follow the constitution we follow the laws 
Why? Because within it, as a citizen, comes our justification. But ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand something. We're part of that stone that was shoot out of that rock. And once you've been born of the Spirit, you've entered an eternal kingdom. A kingdom made not with hands. A kingdom with not, that has no man laws. But it's got a law of God, a moral of God, a, a covenant of God that screams better things in this life. And Paul is saying, why are we continuing in a man-made kingdom, in a man-made lust, in a man-made passion, when God has created for us a heaven above every heaven, where no man shall have to fall on the mercy of God again? My, my, my. We got to think about it. Know ye not? So many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. How many believes that? Amen. Therefore, we're buried with him in baptism into death. Think about this. There ain't no man in here that if that woman you walked down the aisle with, if she hadn't have took your name, no way in the world you would have married her. It's a, it's a man's thing. She takes your name. She's your woman, your wife, right? Miss Green, Miss McKinney, if she had said, Bill, I like my name. I'm going to just keep my name. I got my own thing going. Now, we're going to be married. It's cool. I'll wear the ring, but I ain't taking your name. Brother Bill would have been like, you ain't taking my name. You ain't coming home, Jack. How many is with me? I'd have done the same thing. But we'd have found out that before we got too far along. You know by the first couple weeks if they're ready to take your name or not. Oh, I'm preaching. Some of you ain't listening, but I'm preaching. See, the Lord knows within the first couple days, He knows a couple hours, first couple minutes, whether you're willing to take His, His name or not. And guess what? He ain't give you no Holy Ghost if you wasn't prepared to take His name. I ain't even talking about water baptism now. I'm talking about baptized by the Spirit of God. I'm talking about he ain't messing with somebody that ain't willing to lay down, completely sold out to his nut. If you got any problem with the stone, if you got any problem with his oracles, if you got any place in your heart that does not want to surrender to the stone, it's going to break you. Don't let it crush you. It's going to break you until you surrender and say, I want your name. I want your name. How many wants his name? Think about it. We continue to send the grace me have help. He wouldn't have took his wife if she hadn't said, I'll be Miss Green. I want to be Miss Green. I was born to be Miss Green. How many is with me? Amen. Oh, that's the love and the affection. Getting back to water baptism now. I don't understand a person. I don't understand a church. I don't understand a group or an organization that tries to bypass the name. We can't bypass it by considering it a theocracy, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to absolutely compound upon it and realize that there isn't a one name whereby men and women shall be saved. This is the three entities of one thing. This is the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily with inside of one man named Jesus Christ. And everything that we do, whether it's praying for our food or praying for the sick or blessing someone or dedicating children, on and on and on, we do it all in the lovely and powerful and eminent name of Jesus Christ. It is time and high time that we get sold out, not to just the person, but the name. We got to get sold out to the net. Oh, think about it. Sometimes grace is offensive. In that age, it's hard to imagine. But the Lord's grace was too graceful. Man, did you hear what I said? In that age, God's grace was too merciful. In this age, God's grace. Is too unmerciful. Because God's grace requires you to grow up. How many is with me? In this age, the grace covers you. Yes, absolutely we're all covered by grace. But this grace, ladies and gentlemen, covers you. And it also 
educates you and it causes you to perform in a state of maturity. But where you stand in a state of maturity, yes, you still may need God's favor and God's mercy. Yes, that's, that's all true. But you're not an abuser now of grace because you learned from this. You've been broken by this. I'm here to tell you, pain is the best teacher you'll ever get. Suffering is the greatest teacher you'll ever get. Some of us, if God don't allow us to suffer, we'll never change. Somebody say amen. We'll never. Sometimes it's going to take a wife leaving. Sometimes it'll take a husband leaving. Sometimes it'll take finances drawn up. Sometimes it'll take a sickness. Sometimes it takes loss. But God's breaking everybody that comes in contact with the stone because he he dropped the stone that you and I could pick it up and embrace him for now until ever. Think about it. Peter, he knew where he was at. He knew whom he was and who's. He says, look, the same as made the head of the corner. The builders, they're rejecting the stone. Now Daniel said, this stone that I seen hewed out of the mountain, it's going to crush all these others. It's going to crush it. Number one, those first kingdoms, clay and iron was meshed together. Anybody that knows anything knows that won't stick together. Iron and iron, yeah. But not even concrete and iron, because it could be chipped away. But this was clay and iron. So it didn't, it didn't take much to dissolve of these two. Gold and silver, the same. It didn't take much to dissolve of these two. Each one melts down at different temperatures altogether. You could bring just silver out of gold and on and on and on. It's, it's amazing. Everything can be separated that isn't meant to join together. And see, the only thing, ladies and gentlemen, that was meant to join together was one thing. The only thing that was meant to be joined together was the bride to God. For Jesus said, stuck his hand out, and he says, for all that you've forgiven me, I've not lost a one. They can't be plucked out of my hand. Why? He was the stone that the builder rejected. And we're the church that's been disallowed. But I'm here to tell you, we're in his hand. We're in his hand. And the world can't pluck us out. Satan can't pluck us out. We were meant to be together. For Paul said in Ephesians, he said, I speak as a mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. He said, for he's the head. Right? As man is the head of the wife, so is Christ the head of the church. He said, he's the savior of the body. He says, for we're bone of his bone. How many's with me? We're flesh of his flesh. You mean to tell me you're bone of the bone of the rock? Come on, somebody. I ain't talking about the rock all y'all infatuated with. I'm talking about the rock. I'm talking about the rock. We're bone of his bone. We're flesh of his flesh. We're power of his power. We're might of his mind. We're spirit of his spirit. We're one. What Daniel saw was the church of today being hewed out of a rock. And I'm here to tell you that the power that the church of God has will destroy the kingdoms of this world. Come on. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. I know I'm sweating better than you're shouting. Think about it. Jesus says, speaking to the disciples he said have you not read in the scripture have you not read have you not read did you forget to do your homework did you forget to do your homework have you not read there's a stone that the builders are rejecting <laughs> there's a stone that the builders are rejecting and the same is made the head the chief cornerstone Jesus is looking at him and he's like He's wanting to just say, Brother Nina, he's wanting to just say, I, I'm that stone. And also, ladies and gentlemen, the stone, when Jesus died, Brother Owens, it looked like we're still waiting for the stone. 
I mean, was Jesus it or not? And so stone, Jesus rather the type, he dies. God didn't die. He can't die. But the man died. The man everyone had built confidence and faith in. All right. He dies. A couple of days goes by before the resurrection. He's still dead. Everybody's crying, squandering, going back to the same old, same old business as usual. But then the stone, because stone can't die, I mean, he's with me. It's, it's back around now. It's, it's gone. It's, the tomb's empty. The stone roamed the stone away. And he's walking around. He's introducing himself again to people that hadn't saw him in a couple days. They saw him live. Ladies and gentlemen, but there comes a time 40 days or so later that he's got to go to the Father. He's got to go take his place in heavenly places. But he said already in the scripture, he says, I'm not going to leave you without a comforter. How I many is appreciative of the covenant of the Holy Ghost? I'm not going to ever leave you without a comforter again. Tarry here in Jerusalem until I come. Are you hearing me today? Tarry here in Jerusalem until power comes. Tarry here in Jerusalem. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to tell you is this. On that day, on Acts, in the book of Acts, the second chapter, when the Holy Ghost was falling in that upper room with a bunch of just simple-minded people with a simple task. Ladies and gentlemen, that was actually God taking his chisel out and beginning to beat inside of a mountain. It looked insecure. It looked like it wasn't going nowhere. But a great, great mountain of people, men and women and children, begin to build the kingdom of God that now stands today. Give him some praise. I want to tell you something. You have a heritage. You have a heritage. You have builders in your life. You have builders in your DNA. You have people, men and women, that have sacrificed and have prayed. And ladies and gentlemen, that had dropped stones and, and picked up mantles of mercy and peace and grace and but also mantles of holiness and sacrifice and separation. They, they, they now reign as immortals in the eyes of God. For Paul speaking in Hebrews, he says, For we're encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Paul made clear to, for us to know that these people that have gone before us, he said the world was not worthy of them. The world, Paul said, they're not worthy. I'm not worthy. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, they picked up the stone. They picked up the stone that the builder rejected. They embraced him. They was martyred. They were killed. They were humiliated. They were ridiculed. They suffered starvation. They suffered everything you could ever imagine. But they did it because they got the revelation of the stone that was hewed out of the mountain. What America needs, ladies and gentlemen, today is a revelation of the stone, the kingdom of God that is greater than America, that is greater than Russia, that is greater than China, that is greater than the superpowers of today, that there is but one kingdom that man cannot destroy, and that is the kingdom of the living God. Stand to your feet and give God some praise. Stand to your feet. Let's just give God some praise. I challenge you today, get a hold of a revelation. It ain't just in slaps and, oh, praise God, run around that crazy. Some of you need to really get in the book. So you need to get a revelation. I look at the, the, our young people, the leaders in this church, I'm like, my, my God, what gets y'all going? We got to get something down in our spirit. We got to get a real word where, where we know when, when, when God's talking to us. We know when a real word is hitting us, we can respond. God's not always speaking. We need to, how many knows what I'm talking about? We need to embrace God when he's speaking to us. Think about it today. Listen to me. He's the rock, the stone that the builders rejected. Notice this last verse. He's a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Who could be offended by God? Think about it. Sometimes grace is offensive. 
How did he get to get to all this? He's a rock of offense. How can grace and mercy be offensive? At the word being of disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. My, my, my. Oh, how many knows Jesus is worthy? Come on, somebody. You see, we teach, ladies and gentlemen, this day and age, we teach grace. Grace, praise God for grace. But grace isn't a license to do whatever we want to do. No, we preach grace with maturity. It's offensive today. Nobody wants that. They get mad. They get offended. The church world of today is stumbling over Jesus Christ. They're offended at Jesus Christ. But I'm thankful he dropped the stone. He didn't kill me. But he did warn me. Aren't you glad of that? Come on, say that to your neighbor. He didn't kill me. But he did warn me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to love you, Lord. We want to love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to love you, Lord. We want to love you, Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. There's so much to be said. I can't go no further. Let's just lift our hands and let's worship the Lord. If you need the altar, the altar is open. Just obey the Lord. Just obey the Lord. Just obey the Lord. Don't leave here this morning without obeying the Lord. Just obey the Lord. Take me to the place where